Hello, this is the Everton Technologies RF Nomad. The RF Nomad is an extremely weird Eurorack module. It's actually a radio, it's a shortwave radio in which you can use a control voltage to control the tuning dial. Shortwave is the domain of an incredibly strange sound used for long range international radio stations, used for number stations. Shortwave is an extremely strange domain and the RF Nomad makes no attempt to tame it. It doesn't have the usual technology that's built into shortwave radios to clean up and take out the carrier signal, so we hear the squealing whine. It drifts. It's not stable. It moves around. So it's like this strange, untamable beast. But what's cool is that we can harness the airwaves around our studio. Your mileage will vary. You might not be able to pick up as much as I can, and I might not be able to pick up as much as you can. But what's cool is it will depend on the location. So where you are affects what you can get. The time of day and the propagation of radio signals affects what you can get. The size of your aerial, everything. Awesome. And of course, there's a whole load of weird ass things that happen when you put a radio under voltage control. So what a f***ing cool noise source this thing is. I think the chap who invented this thing puts it very well when he says that shortwave is the domain of fire and brimstone. I definitely know what he means. Okay, so how it works is this. At the top, you have an antenna. Here she is. The length of the antenna will have a huge factor on the kinds of things that you can pick up. What I highly, 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 highly recommend doing is take the end of the aerial, chop it off, and add on a length of um, wire, which is what I did, and I ran about 20 feet of it around the ceiling of my studio. In doing so, I massively improved the reception of this thing. The other thing which was I uh, was advised by Russ is get this thing, the aerial that is, away from metal objects. <laughs> Obviously the thing itself is a metal object, but other metal objects. Um, if you do that, it does definitely help. You have a dial at the top for RF gain, which goes from nothing to very friggin loud. So loud that it kind of distorts internally, which is awesome. Beneath that we have tuning. And while this thing is set to a specific range, there is quite a lot of range with the tuning dial, so you do have to be very careful with it. Beneath it though, we have a CV amount dial, and this is a cool thing. So here is where we stick control voltages into this thing to control the tuning dial. It literally has one in and one out. So what you could do is use an offset. So this is the smartest way to use it. Take an offset, so I'm using and channel 3 on maths, which is just a DC offset. Wab that bad boy into the CV in. And then with a bit of CV amount applied, that offset is going to do the same thing as the tuning dial, but it's going to allow me to create a fine tune as much as I want. And what's cool is, because it's maths, if I wab that into the sum output, then I can have two offsets, plus I can have control voltages on when I want them to be. So maths is an awesome pairing into this CV and or any complex modulation source where you get to choose what goes in because... Oh, lastly, we have audio gain, by the way. Post RF gain. So the way that it works, Russ advises having RF all the way up. Have gain all the way up, RF all the way up. I have a little bit of CV amount and I generally center these so that I have my modulation offsets in the middle, meaning that if I try and find something, I've got a bit of play. And what you do is sweep the tuning dial until you hear something like that. The sort of heterodyne squeal of a station. And at the center of that will be this kind of null point. There it is. Whoa, but it's breaking up because it's way too loud on the RF gain. Back off. 
use my offset just to find that sweet spot in the middle. Turn down the reverb. Going the wrong way. Go back. There it is. There you can hear it. Tons of bass. I mean, this thing doesn't filter the signal in any way, whereas a normal radio would have a filter. So use a bandpass filter called Gasmatron Excellent for this. High pass, low pass, so we can take the edge off it. And you'll hear the heterodyne bass start to come in as the thing drifts. It drifts. It doesn't stay perfectly in tune. It's not a scientific instrument. So you have to kind of zero it in. And of course, it's a radio signal. It will vary over time. Its own strength changes. So it's like working with this weird reactive force. It's cool as hell. You know, what you get is dependent on the time, your place, the size of the aerial, propagation. Whether it's day or night, you won't get much during the day. You have to use this thing at night. It's currently quarter to 11. Bat shit. How cool is that? It's drifting. So you go off to look for something else. Here's a weird one. We're using an audio rate LFO from Maths and we're using the other channel to control the amount of that being sent to the CV in dial. So we get periodical FM modulation of the RF Nomad. Of course, we can dial in the amount with the CV amount dial. Somewhere in there is our Spanish station. noise generator. Voices on this thing have a weird kind of vibe. They sound like ring modded. Unless you zero right in.
that to control the module as well. Yeah. That's part maths anger, part corgasmatron anger. Part shortwave madness. Bonkers. And ace. <laughs> 